We've all been told to eat healthy, exercise more, and take care of ourselves. But what does that really mean? As nurses, we are often the ones tasked with answering this question. And here's the uncomfortable truth. Communicating what is truly healthy isn't as simple as it seems. So how do we get the message across in a way that sticks? Let's start with the basics. As nurses, we are on the front line of healthcare. We are the ones patients turn to for advice on how to live healthier lives. But here's the problem. Health advice can be overwhelming, confusing and often contradictory. One day we are told that fat is the enemy, the next it's sugar. We hear that we should exercise every day, but then we are told not to overdo it. Even something as simple as hydration. Should you drink 8 glasses of water a day or just when you're thirsty? Honestly, I don't know anymore. There's so much noise out there and patients are understandably confused. So how do we as nurses cut through the noise and communicate what is truly healthy? First, we have to acknowledge that health isn't a one-size-fits-all concept. What's healthy for one person might not be the best for another. This is where it gets tricky. As healthcare professionals, we need to tailor our advice to the individual's needs, lifestyle and medical history. And while making sure the message is clear and actionable. The first step is to meet people where they are. And it's only too often we throw out rot recommendation like eat more vegetables or get more exercise without taking into account where our patients are starting. If someone is used to eating fast food every day, telling them to switch to a plant-based diet overnight is setting them up for failure. Instead, we need to ask questions and listen. What's their current routine? What small manageable changes can we make right now? And when I say we, I mean that they should make it, but with our support. Because health is about progress, not perfection. And I have a great theory for understanding your patient, but it will come at the end. Let's get back to getting the point across. Because tech nutrition, for example, we all know that a balanced diet is crucial for good health. But how do we explain that without overwhelming the patient with too much information? I don't get it. I don't know what to do. The key is to simplify without oversimplifying. Instead of talking about macronutrients, calorie counting, we can focus on the principles that make sense in everyday life. Eat a variety of home foods. Focus on color, more fruits and vegetables, fewer processed snacks. And most importantly, explain why these choices matters. When people understand the why behind healthy eating, how it fuels their body, prevents disease and boosts their energy levels, they are more likely to make a lasting change. But even then, the message isn't complete. People aren't just looking for rules, they're looking for flexibility. One of the most damaging aspects of health advice today is the all or nothing mindset. We've all heard patients say, well, I had a slice of cake today, so I blew my diet for the day. I'm a failure. This kind of thinking makes health seem rigid and unattainable. As nurses, we need to communicate that health is about balance. It's okay to indulge sometimes. The goal is not to be perfect, but to make healthy choices most of the time. That's the message that sticks. Now let's talk about exercise. Do we have to go over this again? There's another area where the messaging can get mixed. How much is enough? What kind of exercise should you be doing? Again, it's about meeting people where they are. For someone who is sedentary, jumping straight into a high intensive interval training isn't realistic. But encourage them to take a 10 minute walk every day. That's something they can do. And once they build that habit, it becomes easier to add more. Exercise doesn't have to be complicated. Moving your body in any way that feels good is the key to long-term health. 
But here's the other side of the coin. We need to avoid making people feel guilty about not doing enough. Health advice can sometimes sound like a list of things people aren't doing. You are not eating enough vegetables, you are not exercising enough, you are not getting enough sleep. Instead, we need to focus on positive reinforcement. Celebrating the small wins. Did you go for a walk three times this week when they hadn't exercised at all before? That's a success. And it should be treated as such. By reinforcing positive behaviors, we make health fields attainable. And speaking of sleep, this is one area where communication often falls short. We know that sleep is just as important as diet and exercise, but how often do we really emphasize it in healthcare? Many patients don't realize the profound effect that lack of sleep can have on their overall health. As nurses, we can help them understand that sleep is the body's way of repairing itself. It's affecting everything, mental health, weight management, immune function. But we also need to be realistic. Not everyone can get 8 hours of sleep every night. Especially if they're juggling work, family and other responsibilities. So how do we communicate the importance of sleep without making them feel like it's another impossible goal. It's not impossible. It is impossible for it. If a patient is only getting 5 hours of sleep at night, telling them to jump to 8 isn't going to work. But could they get 30 minutes more? Could they start winding down earlier, turning off screens before bed, or creating a more restful sleep environment? By focusing on small attainable steps, we can help patients to improve their sleep without making it feel like an overwhelming task. And here's another curveball to throw it all out the window. Health isn't just about the physical, it's also about the mental and emotional well-being. This is an area where communication is absolutely critical. And often it's where we as healthcare providers can make the biggest impact. Stress, anxiety, depression are just as damaging to health as poor diet and lack of exercise. But they are often overlooked in traditional health conversations. Patients may not realize how much their mental health is affecting their physical health and vice versa. As nurses, we need to create spaces where patients feel comfortable talking about mental health. But this isn't easy, especially since there's still a stigma around mental illness. But by opening up the conversation and normalizing discussion about stress, anxiety and emotional well-being, we can help patients understand that their mental health is just as important as their physical health. And again, it's about giving them practical, manageable advice, whether that is practicing mindfulness, connecting with a therapist, or simply taking time to relax and recharge. And there's another layer to this, social and environmental factors that influence health. Not everyone has access to fresh, healthy food, or a safe place to exercise. Some patients are dealing with chronic stress from financial issues, unsafe living conditions, or lack of social support. As nurses, we need to recognize these barriers and communicate health advice in a way that is realistic and compassionate. Telling someone to just eat more vegetables when they live in a food desert isn't helpful. Instead, we need to work with them to find the solution that fits their circumstances. Whether that's connecting them with local resources, helping them to find affordable options, or simply acknowledging the challenge they face. And one of the most important aspects of communicating what's healthy is building trust. Patients need to know we're not just reciting generic advice. They need to feel that we are genuinely invested in their well-being. This means taking the time to listen and to understand their unique challenges and providing a personalized advice that fits into their lives. It's about being honest, but also compassionate. We can't just tell people what to do. We need to guide them, support them, and empower them to make choices that will improve their health in the long run. 
And if you want a great theory for building this trust and understanding your patients, then check out Miguel Bakhtin's theory right here. I warmly recommend that you check it out because it will actually help you to build a better bond with your patient.